right. Hello, my name is Xavier Duran. I am the Arts, uh, Culture, and Education Programming Librarian here at the Lyle Library District. Uh, before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that we are in what's called webinar mode, which means only myself and our, our presenters are the only ones with an active camera and microphone. That means we won't be able to hear or see you. So if you're still in the middle of dinner or you're in your PJ because it's raining outside, uh, we won't be able to hear or see you. Um, with that said, if you have any questions during the program, please put those into the Q&A section below. And um, I believe during the program or at the end, uh, those questions uh, will be answered. Uh, with that said, um, Medicare is a crazy maze of sorts. Luckily, we have some in incredible experts available. Uh, so please welcome uh, from Medicare Solutions Network, David Wiley. Super, thank you, Xavier. And uh, thanks to everybody joining us here tonight. It is uh, what we refer to in my industry, this is the most wonderful time of the year. And if it's dripping with sarcasm, you'd know why, because every other commercial on TV now is berating you but now it's the Medicare, or just around the corner, it's going to be the Medicare open enrollment. And, and that starts October 15th, runs through December 7th, and there is a deluge of advertising on TV and mail that will fill up your box, uh, trying to get you to make moves, trying really to scare you with advertising. What we want to do here tonight is try to clear away some of that clutter. Um, I'm joined here tonight, Beauty and the Beast. That's my wife, Lori. She'll be work in the chat function, so she should be able to answer some of your questions, but let's be clear about what goes on here tonight. We're insurance agents, but we're not here tonight selling anything. We're not with the federal government, we're not Medicare, but we are brokers in a market that has tremendous competition and, and, and wonderful transparency. And one of the things that we love about Medicare is the ability to make fully informed decisions if you'll participate. Unfortunately, many people don't. Um, and we want to talk to you about that tonight, about what your options could be in this world of Medicare. Uh, as brokers representing virtually all of the companies in the marketplace, you will start to see the cornerstone of Medicare is robust competition. And that combined with the ground rules that Medicare sets on these insurance companies offers wonderful opportunities for you to potentially save money through the aging process if you'll remain engaged. Most people don't. They make one decision, they come to Medicare, um, they throw it in a drawer and they don't look at it. Uh, that's a mistake. We're here tonight working on an informational basis. That means we will be general in what we talk about. We're not supposed to mention specifics. That is unless you ask specific questions, in which case we are honored to answer those questions. But understand, we have no dog in this fight. We're completely neutral. Whatever company you want to go with, we're happy to help you in that regard. But what our job is to help you with information. Started teaching this class, gosh, I don't know, Xavier, we've probably been coming to Lyle for at least 10 years. And what we've tried to do through the years is help people overcome this initial uh, barrage that you get from the insurance companies and also from your friends and family. They love you, but they're going to tell you stuff that may not be necessarily true. And what we found in the world of Medicare through the years is that this is a world of partial sentences and half truths and floating asterisks. You wouldn't even know we're there if you didn't bother to educate yourself or use a wingman to help you. That's what we do. You'll feel a lot like this guy as you approach Medicare because your sister-in-law did this over here and your brother-in-law did this over here and, and somebody at work told you you should be over here and your parents were over here. They may have all made very smart decisions, but in the final analysis, what they did might not have been right for you at all. And what we want to do is understand this world of Medicare. That's where education comes in. And that's where when you first come to Medicare, you're, you're inundated with mail from the insurance company. If you've ever owned an insurance product, they know your date of birth and they know your address. They're going to pummel you with advertising. And that's what it is. It's propaganda. It's very thin on details and very big on glittering generalities and, and, and smiling, happy people. You'll notice that everyone in the world of Medicare seems to be exceedingly happy. Pay attention. But that stuff is very thin on what you need to know to make fully informed decisions. You'll find when you come to Medicare, you got a new best friend in the world. And that is Medicare. The federal government has put together a wonderful program to help us with our medical needs as we age. It will give us real information, and, and that's what this book is here 
A Medicare new book comes out every year. The 2023s have just started to hit in the mailboxes. You may have already received yours, but this is a great example of the federal government helping you make decisions and educate you about the world of Medicare, what you need to know. We always say that this book does two things incredibly well. It is chock full of knowledge, and it's a tremendous sleeping aid. If you have trouble dozing off, this thing will knock you down in pretty short order. You'll also find that where there's good information in there, it's also very gray, meaning you want black and white answers. What you'll get in this book is generally could be, might be, should be, normally, could possibly. When you want specific answers, this book is, is more in the gray area, but you can get specific answers at 1-800-MEDICARE. This book is backed up by a fabulous 800 number. And those people, this time of year, during the annual election period is technically what it's called, from October 15th to December 7th, that 1-800-MEDICARE is staffed 24 hours a day. And like Jake from State Farm, they are waiting for your call at two in the morning. I'll never call you. What you'll find is in addition to all the mail you're getting in your mailbox as you turn 65, will be accompanied by a never ending string of phone calls. And these calls will intimate that they might be with Medicare. They've been assigned to your account. They're there to help you sign up. Bologna sausage, these are all sales pitches. And you think you come to Medicare and many of the people here tonight may already be in Medicare. And you'd think, thank goodness I made my decisions. They're finally gonna leave me alone. No, they're not. They're gonna keep calling. And you're gonna get new mail instead of welcoming you to Medicare. The new mail that comes this time of year is telling you that there's been big changes to Medicare and, and your coverage could be ending and your, your coverage is in jeopardy. These again are all sales tactics trying to get you to call. I've seen postcards that look like they're from the county of DuPage. It says right there, county of DuPage. No, sorry. If you read the fine print, this gives you the authorization, gives them the authorization to call you and to start to berate you about possibly flipping the business. The book is good. The 800 number is great. It's backed up by a wonderful website. Please note the difference. Medicare.gov, G-O-V. For the life of me, I don't know how they let Medicare.com come to market. That's a sales site. People trip into that. I had a client just last week, very proudly concurred with my direction and sent me proof that he had enrolled in Medicare and my heart sank as I saw that, no, he actually signed up with Medicare.com, had no idea he was talking to a salesperson. This is the federal government. They're not there to sell you anything. They're there to educate you. And this website gives us numerous tools, most notably this time of year. Right here, we have a tool we don't, the federal government does, embedded in Medicare.gov that allows us to look and research your drug program. This time of year, that's critically important because during this October 15th through December 7th window, you have the right every year to address your prescriptions and to see, is there maybe a better program for next year? Well, we can see it right here and we can judge. The beauty of Medicare, vicious competition and complete transparency. So on these drug programs, we're excited. This year we had 23 Next year, we have 24 different drug programs. This is great. More people getting more businesses, getting into the market, helping to keep costs down because that transparency allows you to make fully informed decisions and keeps the insurance companies on their toes because they know they can't just run away with their premiums because if you're checking it on a regular basis, you can change this drug program guaranteed every year. We use this a lot, both when you first come to Medicare and after you've been in Medicare for a number of years always good to make a reality check that you're in the right program for next year. Talk briefly, what is Medicare? No, it's the government insurance program. That's for people that are over 65 and have worked at least 40 quarter or their spouse has. You can qualify under a spousal benefit. Um, it's a terrific program, but what we'll find here tonight is this sentence is critically important. Original Medicare was never designed to cover 100% you are always expected to have skin in the game. Medicare will form the foundation of your coverage as you move forward, A and B, the bedrock. But A and B, because it's not complete, there's more insurance that you might choose to add to that to make it complete. And that's where Lori and I play. We have a team here in Lyle, help you to navigate these waters and, and, and figure out what your best options are, what your best value is. Everyone's value component is a little different. Medicare, um, 
Typically, people would come there after 65, but there's also a world of people who can get to Medicare under 65. If you've been declared disabled for 24 months, or perhaps you have a dread disease, end-stage renal failure is a big one, Lou Gehrig's disease, there's a number of ways you can come to Medicare under 65. Those people represent unique challenges, and we'll try to touch on that a little bit later. But again, remember, original Medicare was never designed to cover 100%. You were always expected to have skin in the game, deductibles, co-insurance, co-payments. What are we going to do about that? Well, we'll analyze that here tonight. Here's where your journey begins. Here's your Medicare card. Um, most of our parents, uh, if you look at their Medicare card, I would predict you would find that their start date was the first day of the month in which they turned 65. And that used to be the golden finish line for our parents. They'd turn 65, they'd retire, take the grandkids fishing. They certainly activate their Medicare. Medicare always starts the first day of any given month. You're born on the 23rd. I care, but I don't care because I know your Medicare starts the first day of that month that you turn 65 or not. We've seen tectonic shifts in this world of Medicare. I've been doing it now for over 15 years. And the baby boomers are driving significant change. One of the most common things that's happening now is baby boomers aren't ready to retire at 65. They're in better shape at 65 than their parents were at 55. They like the job, uh, they like the money, they like the socialization, and they like the benefits that they're getting through work. And this represents one of the first potholes, one of the common mistakes that we see far too often. People will come to the world of Medicare, go back to that maze. Everybody and your brother is telling you what to do. And they're filling your head with partial sentences and half truths and floating asterisks. One of the most common is that when you turn 65, you have got to activate Medicare. Because if you don't, there's going to be a world of hurt and you're going to be in real trouble with penalties and lockouts and the world is going to fall down upon you. So you've got to enroll. And that's not true. If you continue to work and where you work, there are more than 20 people that work there. The term we use for that, that's called creditable coverage. And that type of insurance, as you continue to work, would allow you to delay activating your Medicare. You don't have to, and they're not going to turn it on automatically unless you're receiving Social Security benefit payments. A has no premium, but B does. If they know they can get the Part D premium out of your Social Security check, because you've already turned that on, they'll go ahead and send you the card. But if not, they're going to wait to hear from you. And remember, Social Security is the umbrella of this benefit. Medicare is part of the world of Social Security. There's no Medicare offices. It's all run through Social Security. But those are two different benefits. Medicare is a medical benefit. Social Security, that's where they give you back less than you ever gave them. A and B could form the foundation, or you could hold off. For most people that continue to work, it can't hurt to activate the Part A. Um, there would be specific reasons that you wouldn't want to activate either of these. That would typically be if you have an HSA type of health savings account insurance. If you have one, you know what I'm talking about. But A and B, um, A would typically not hurt you on an employer plan. It's just going to kind of ride shotgun with your primary coverage through work. The problem we see here, um, and just last week we were doing a seminar and uh, the wife was was wonderful. The husband turned 65. She was told she had to sign him up. She signed him up. He watched the baseball game. And that come to find out here over a year later, she's realizing now that because he was on her coverage and there's more than 20 people that work there, that's called creditable coverage. He did not need to have his Part B activated because his primary coverage was through her employment. He's been paying a, a Medicare premium every month for over a year for something that he never needed. And that's, that's really frustrating when we see that, people spending more money than they should be spending. Note your time frame. You can't even sign up for Medicare more than three months out. Typically, if you're not receiving Social Security benefit payments and you want Medicare, 90 days out from your birth month. It doesn't have to be to the day. It can be three months out or two months out or even one month out. But I'll tell you, the federal government does not move swiftly. We want to make sure that we're ahead of the curve here. People always want to know, when should we meet? And I always tell folks, whenever you feel your blood pressure going up, because this is too important to sleep on. And yet every year, every month of every year, we seem to find people who always want to wait till the last 15 minutes of the month 
thinking that somehow we have a, a temporary Medicare card for them. We don't. This is all between you and the federal government. It's good, but not complete. We can make it complete, but we need your Medicare number to be able to do this other stuff. You can sign up three months before your birth month. If you miss it and sign up in your birth month, it would go effective the first day of the next month. If you swerve into these later months and you space it and you, and you forget, somehow you forgot you were turning 65, you could find that these would be relating to time delays. You're still not gonna pay a, a penalty financially, but you could be delayed in activating your Part B. So you certainly want to be ahead of the curve on this. You wouldn't want to activate A and B if you continued to work. A typically couldn't hurt you. But Lori, why would they not want to activate Medicare at all? Well, that is, again, you just mentioned it, but people get confused. They think that all of their friends and family say you have to do something when you turn 65. Again, reminder, if you're continuing to work and planning to continue to stay on your employer coverage and that employer has more than 20 employees, you don't have to activate Medicare A or B and there are no penalties if at age 67, you finally decide to retire and come off that coverage and activate Medicare for the first time then. It is probably the biggest misconception in Medicare, hands down. Um, and, and one of the biggest, most costly mistakes, hands down, is people activating Medicare and staying on their employer coverage because you're literally paying for something that you're not using. Yeah, I think the worst one we found was a couple of years ago, a gentleman who agreed after looking at Medicare and understand the world of Medicare is, is different. There'll be some major changes that you'll have to wrap your mind around. You almost got to check what you learned up to 65 at the door. One of the things about Medicare is everything's done individually. I know you've always been a couple, you've always been married, you've always had the same coverage, but now Medicare allows you to separate and go individually, which is actually liberating because we can customize a program for the husband, customize a program for the wife. All you ever got from your employer was a one size fits most. Now we can have a specific drug program for mom and a different one for dad and different, different policies to make it complete. Frequently, we find that husband and wife, when they come to the world of Medicare, maybe one of them continues to work and the other just stays on their health program, right? It's, it's just the easiest thing to do. And we've always been with them. But that's a mistake. You want to be ahead of this and you want to at least look at your options. Frequently, we find that breaking off the spouse from the group coverage can be beneficial. It would be obvious to think that you're paying $600 a month for the two of you. But in reality, she's two thirds of that and you're a third of that. Um, that can open up a window where actually at that 600, you might be 150, she's 450. There's a very good possibility that she can drop off, enter into the world of Medicare, and we can improve her coverage from a perspective of a network with Medicare where your, your network at work is good, but Medicare is any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States that takes Medicare. On your employer plan, Typically, you have an out-of-pocket maximum. Maybe that's three, four, five thousand dollars. With Medicare, you could have a supplement that literally has a two hundred and thirty-three dollar deductible. And then you got to look at premiums. Frequently, here we can save money by splitting the couple. Not always, but it's certainly worth looking at. Lori you had a couple of questions in the chat. Well, I, no questions in the chat, but I think there are a couple of things also to point out. Folks that are on Affordable Care Act plans or individual plans are, are required to jump into Medicare when they turn 65. Um, you cannot ride individual coverage longer than 65. Although in this day and age, I don't know why you'd want to because most Affordable Care Act plans are not very affordable unless you're getting a subsidy. Um, the other thing is be careful about COBRA. Um, one of the things that David and I saw a lot in particular during COVID as people got furloughed, their employers allowed them to ride COBRA and because they felt bad about furloughing them, they paid for their COBRA. Big problem, COBRA works great if you're under 65, COBRA works completely differently when you're over 65. So somebody who's over 65 should not even consider staying on COBRA even if it's being being paid for 100% by another entity. 
So what we're saying is the devil's in the details and it's better right. to be ahead of the curve than behind the curve. A has no premium, but B does have a premium. And that premium this year is $170 per person per month. But understand this Medicare thing is pretty expensive and the government's looking for ways to finance their adventure into the world of Medicare. And how they're going to do that is they're going to look to your success and they're happy to participate in your success. This doesn't apply to everyone. Well, actually, it applies to everyone, but maybe not if you're making a lot of money. But it's not hard to imagine that in Chicago, husband and wife working together, approaching 65 in their premium earning years, may be doing pretty well. And the government's excited about that because they're looking at what you're making. And if you make more than $182,000, they're going to start to charge you more than the 170. dollars This thing is called IRMA your income-related monthly adjustment amount. It is something that people get blindsided by all the time. It frustrates me. Know the rules of engagement. How this works, the government ain't going to call you when you're turning 65 and say, like, how you been doing? No, they're going to look at your tax returns. But the government is hamstrung by their computers. In 2022, they only have visual on what you filed in 2021. Using 2021, well, that reports what you made in 2020. So understand that this is every year looking two years back. It is very possible. A lot of baby boomers are making decisions at 63, 64, 65. They keep working 66 and on. They could be making financial decisions that could have a sonic boom effect. We work with people. We've never made this kind of money before in our life. Why are we paying more? Well, I don't know. Did you take some money out of your 401k? Well, yeah. Well, that's a taxable event. The world was on fire as the market has been cratering. A lot of financial people want you to put money from your 401k into a Roth IRA. Well, that can be a valid strategy. But remember, the money you're taking out of your 401k to put in your Roth, remember you had to pay taxes on that? Because that's a taxable event. That's income that's going in this bucket. If you sold stocks at a profit, I guess that could have happened a while ago, maybe not lately. But if you sold stocks at a profit, that's income that's going to go in the bucket. And they're looking for every nickel they can lay their, their, their paws on, the change in the cushions of your couch. And if you went above 182 k two years ago, you're going to step up. We had clients not a month ago. They took money out of their 401k to help their daughter buy a condo. That was a beautiful thing. But they took out $5,000 too much. They swerved over this number because that gets added to their income. And now they're both paying more and paying more on the drug program as well. I often say, I love my government. I just don't want to give them one more nickel than they're already taking. Be aware of the financial decisions you're making. They could jump up and bite you further down the road. Yeah, Four parts of Medicare. Oh, what do you got? Questions. One of the questions that came up about Irma is you know, when does the penalty um, go into effect or come into place? Um, I'm not sure the gist of that question, but, you know, my answer was the government is actually going to reassess your cost of Medicare every year. So maybe when you first come to Medicare, because two years prior, you were still working and earning a higher income level, you'll be subject to IRMA that first or second year potentially in Medicare. But Medicare reassesses what you owe them for Medicare A and B every single year. So down the road, as you're now retired and not making that kind of income again, they will reassess and you could potentially then pay less over time. If Hopefully that answers that question. Yeah, they'll be looking at it every year, but they're always looking two years back. Now, they do have a heart. You do have the ability to appeal these higher amounts. Another term that we'll use a lot, uh, you could have a life-changing event. Well, the government says if you've experienced a life-changing event, you can appeal these higher amounts. And the most common life-changing event is retirement or a reduction in work hours. You get hit with this higher number. Remember, in 2022, they're looking at what you made in 2020. You have the right to say, yeah, I did great in 2020. I, I killed it in 2021. But now hang on a second. It's 2022. I've retired. I'm not making this kind of money anymore. And we'd file an appeal with Social Security. It's an official form. We can send it to you. But the idea there is you can say you can request for a determination 
based on the reality of today, not the ancient history that they're looking at. So this is one of those things where you got to understand the rules of engagement. I've seen people who went ahead and paid the higher amounts and never knew that they had the ability to appeal those higher amounts with a simple form and a process through Social Security. Again, love my government, just don't want to give them more money than they're already taking. Quite a, a couple of other questions, honey, that came up are folks who haven't worked 40 quarters and don't qualify on their own for Medicare. The answer is yes. If you have a spouse, um, living or deceased, who qualified, who had worked 40 quarters, you absolutely can utilize their qualification and qualify under your spousal benefits. Um, and then if you go back to that income related chart, um, as far as amounts, there were two columns, the filing individual tax returns. So those are single filers. So anything this year under $71,000. So if you're making $50,000 or $60,000, you will pay the base premium of 17010. Um, so just you, you've got to pay attention to the two columns, the single filers versus the joint filers have different thresholds. And this is this is uh, they they adjust this for inflation, so we're fully expecting that these numbers will go up for next year. Yes, I think that information just got published last week, so that is gotcha. out there, probably not on the Medicare website yet. Gotcha. Okay. Four parts of Medicare. We'll tear them all apart here tonight. A and B going to form the foundation, but you're going to find out that A and B is good, but nowhere near complete. Once we've got A and B, that's under Social Security. That's the federal government. You do that with the feds. You would then potentially look to pick up additional coverage to make it complete. You'd certainly want to look at a drug program. It'd be foolishness not to. And the prescription drug programs are part of the world of Medicare. Private insurance companies bring us these products, but they're monitored and, and controlled and dictated to by, by the world of Medicare, as are these Medicare Advantage programs. This is what's on TV nonstop now. This is where Joan Namath is and, and, and William Shatner and J.J. Walker, all talking about these things called Medicare Advantage. And it's very important to understand the parameters of Medicare Advantage, and we'll go into that in depth in a little bit. But these four parts are from the federal government. They're all great and wonderful. These two are brought to us by the feds, these two are supervised by the feds, but brought to us by private insurance company, where Medicare keeps them on a very short leash and unleashes the power of capitalism. When you've got robust competition, complete transparency, and guardrails, there is a fortune to be saved here if you understand the rules of engagement. But to do anything, we've got to have this Medicare A and B in place. This is what we use at all of our uh, seminars. We do a lot of public speaking. We'll be at Naperville this Thursday night, seven o'clock, be there. We'll be at Arlington Heights Public Library next Tuesday, seven o'clock, be there. Um, but we hand this out and this is what we call the roadmap to Medicare. And what I like about it is it's very simplistic. I've seen the things that the insurance companies hand out and their icons and slides and shoots and ladders and circles and arrows. It is the most confusing thing I don't like that. Let's try to break it down into bite-sized chunks and make it as understandable by taking baby steps. Yeah, we're going to go all the way around the barn. I promise you that. But everything is going to start with having A and B in place. That's going to form the foundation. That's between you and the federal government. That's going to start the first day of the month. You want it to start after 65 or beyond. Um, but but it's not complete. And then we look to pick up other insurance to make it complete. And that's where Lori and I play. We've got two pathways when you come to Medicare. You've got one pathway represented by this column called original Medicare. And that's where we'd have three parts to your coverage. We're going to add a drug program. We're going to add a supplement. And those three pieces working in concert are going to provide your coverage as we move forward. Good things about original Medicare. And there's also detriments. We want to understand both sides of the equation. So we've got to talk about Medicare Advantage. This is a different way to run your health insurance brought to us by a private insurance company. Here, this column, we have Medicare in primary position. And the best thing that gets us is the largest PPO known to mankind. Any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States, they take Medicare, you're in. 
add a drug program and a supplement, and we can customize a package specifically designed to your needs or the idea of Medicare Advantage. And this is literally what we refer to in my industry. It's a Medicare replacement plan. You still got to pay for A and B. You're never getting away from that. And if you're paying IRMA, you're still going to pay the IRMA on the B and the IRMA on the D. But here on this platform, one card, one company, managed healthcare, a private insurance company replacing original Medicare. It has its good and it has its bad as well. But we want to talk about all of it once we've figured out what are we getting from the federal government for $170 a month. Well, start with Medicare Part A. If there's one word for A, it's going to be facilities, buildings. All the buildings that you're going to come into contact with are going to be up under Part A. A has no premium. I always get a kick out of agents when they say it's free. No, it's not. You paid a fortune in taxes your entire life. They just don't charge you when you come to the party. Even though it doesn't have a premium, A has what we would refer to as exposure things that you're responsible for, because remember, Medicare has gaps in the coverage, things that Medicare, original Medicare doesn't cover. But if we're talking buildings, certainly no building would be more important than the hospital in the world of healthcare, but the hospital is not free. It's got a copayment. From the hospital, you've stabilized. Maybe you go into a skilled nursing facility, a rehab, Mary and Joy, step down, something like that. And Medicare loves skilled nursing because it's far less expensive than a hospital. They don't have an MRI machine on every floor. They don't have an emergency room downstairs losing money hand over fist. And from skilled nursing in the hospital, you might go to home health services or, or at the end of life, there's hospice. But all of these things that take place in buildings have exposure, things that you'd be responsible for if all you had was original Medicare. And that's what this looks like. This year, this year, you went and spent one night in the hospital and you were admitted You'd have a copayment if all you had was original Medicare. You'd owe them fifteen hundred and fifty-six dollars. That's for one night in the hospital. But before we panic, understand that fifteen fifty-six would actually cover you for up to sixty nights in the hospital. So you're in for two nights on a burst appendix. You go home three weeks later. You've got nothing better to do. You decide to have a heart attack and go back into the hospital. If you're within your benefit window, you don't pay the fifteen fifty-six again. But on day 61, be warned, it resets. So if you time it just wrong, you could conceivably hit that 1556 several times in a year if all you had was original Medicare. We call that exposure, something you're going to pay for unless you pick up additional coverage. Skilled nursing, wonderful benefit. Medicare loves it. They'll cover you for up to 100 nights of skilled nursing. That's an amazing benefit. But the way that structures, the first 20 nights, you would be covered at 100%. The next 80 nights, though, that becomes a bit sticky because then they start partnering with you and you have a copayment, a nightly copayment of 194.50. Well, times 80, that could ring up to be a pretty big ticket. Understand that Medicare does not cover long-term care. That's a different kind of situation. If you can't get stabilized and out of a skilled nursing facility within 100 days, it's all on you. So that's why people sometimes will pick up long-term care insurance. That's a different type of insurance, a different conversation. But, but no, Medicare will come by to get you back on your feet. But by definition, um, their benefits are limited to where you have stabilized and then pretty much they're going to show you the door. This skilled nursing benefit is a wonderful benefit, but it has a trigger. It has an asterisk. We said this was a world of partial sentences and half-truths and floating asterisks. As good as that benefit is, it's got a trigger point. The trigger says to get this wonderful benefit, you need to be admitted into the hospital for three nights. Know the language. Defend yourself. Understand the rules of engagement. These days, there's two ways you can get into the hospital. One, you've been admitted. There's a diagnosis. There's something we're going to find it and fix it. The other way that you can get admitted into the hospital or spend the night, rather, is not being admitted, but it's under what's called observational status. Observational status means we're not sure, but you'd probably be smarter to stay closer to the emergency room than going home. It's not that Medicare doesn't pay for observational stays. It's that observational stays do not tick the three nights of admission necessary to get the skilled nursing benefit. 
We've seen people get burned here before, and you always want to know, with your little card in your hand, what are we doing? Why are we doing it? Who's paying for it? And what are my alternatives to doing that? It's really important to make fully informed decisions. We don't like surprises. In the hospital or skilled nursing, go home. Medicare will provide for a medical professional to come right to your door to help you get back on your feet. But by definition, these home health services, very limited in duration for major stuff. They're not coming by to trim your toenails. They're coming by for wound dressing or maybe an infusion or maybe a handful of physical therapy visits. But that will be in very short duration. They're not coming over to mow the lawn, do the dishes or play bridge with you. That's what long-term care insurance does. Medicare doesn't provide for long-term care. Hospice. Um, end of life. And, and basically, Medicare picks up almost 100%. It's incredibly good coverage at a very tragic time. But there can be a co-payment for the medications that you take to remain comfortable before you pass away. But here's A, all of your facilities, all of the buildings, no premium, but clearly exposure that you're responsible for if all you ran with was original Medicare. Okay, so what about B? Well, B does have a premium. That base premium this year is 170 10 It's actually going down next year to 166 That's kind of exciting, anything that goes down in the world of Medicare. But the reason we're charging premium here for the Medicare Part B, this is the lion's share of what you're actually going to be using. A would be all of your facilities. B would be everything that goes on in the facilities. So would be all of your buildings. B would be all of your services. So all of your doctors that you see, the specialists that you see, whether you saw them in the hospital or in their office, they're filling up under B. Um, there was an anesthesiologist one time, knocked you out. So a surgeon could operate on you. Wait a second, that happened in the hospital. Yes, I know. But that 1556, that's the facility charge. That's the gurney and the bright lights and the operating theater. Everyone who worked on you, all your labor charges are coming up under B. All of your labs, everything from a blood test to a biopsy, all of your diagnostic testing. We call that the expensive alphabet soup, EKG, EEG, MRI, CAT scan, X-ray, stress test, mammogram, and on, all coming up under B. Get out of the hospital, maybe you need a walker or a wheelchair, or maybe in the hospital, you got a brand new knee or a pacemaker. Maybe you've got a COPD machine or an insulin pump, all coming up under Medicare Part B. If you've ever had a joint replacement, you know that PT stands for pain and torture, also known as physical therapy. They're going to help you walk it right again. Ambulance that takes us to the emergency room, everything they do there. All of your outpatient services, and that's basically anything medical that didn't have you spending the night, well, that's going to have a, a, a service charge. And that's usually stuff uh, outpatient these days. Could be a cataract, could be a colonoscopy. These days, now they've even started doing full knee and hip replacements on an outpatient basis. This is incredible. We would have kept our parents in the hospital for days on end, and now you're in and out on the same day. And the last part of the clinical RX, this is fancy talk for medications that are delivered in the doctor's office or in an outpatient setting or in the hospital. Typically, this is the god-awful stuff, chemotherapy, kidney dialysis, radiation treatment, uh, women sometimes get prolia shots. Those are breathtakingly expensive. No, no, no. They bill up under Medicare Part B. This is where you want to be very careful about what you're doing. Sometimes you have an alternative. You can get it from Walgreens and take it in the privacy of your own home, or you can show up at the doctor's office every four to five weeks and get an infusion. Well, that would be an inconvenience, I agree. And certainly the comfort of, of sitting in your park lounger and, and watching the prices right by getting your prescriptions through Walgreens. But when you get your prescriptions at a retailer, that's gonna run up under your Part D drug program. That's a different place to get your meds. And it leaves you exposed to something called the coverage gap or the donut hole. We'll talk more about that in a second, but just making fully informed decisions. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? Who's paying for it? And what are my alternatives? That's where clinical RX can be very important, a tool in our toolbox. A and B structure differently. A kind of has a pay-as-you-go mentality. Do this, pay that, do this, pay that. B, on the other hand, all of these services have an annual deductible followed by cost sharing. 
And this is what that looks like. This year, the annual deductible one time on all of these services, $233. And if you can wrap your mind around that, you're better than me because I'm in the Affordable Care Act. Lori and I both have $7,000 deductibles. It's insane. In our world, we've got to get to 7,001 before we get a nickel in benefit. Here, you're getting a $233 deductible after which Medicare is going to start splitting bills with you, 80-20. They're going to pick up 80 cents on the dollar. They're going to hold you responsible for 20 cents. And if that wasn't good enough, what you'll see is once you've paid your deductible, call it that little dash right there, Medicare starts taking their negotiated discount. If you've ever seen an explanation of benefits on someone who's in Medicare, you'll see the discount that Medicare takes is marvelous, wonderful, terrific for us as patients. Not so great for the doctors, but that's okay. They're doing all right. But that negotiated discount is taken, and after that, they go to 20%. Good news here. Medicare has an unlimited benefit. There's no cap. You need five knee replacements. They will pay for five knee replacements. But hang on a second. With the unlimited benefit comes unlimited exposure. What does that mean? Well, that means on every one of those knee replacements, remember, every 61 days, the 1556 resets. And if you pay longer in skilled nursing, that's 194.50. I hope you never need hospice benefit. $233 deductible is, is almost hard to, hard to fathom. It, it unlimited 20%, yeah, on everything, there's going to be a 20% charge coming to you on all of your services. So that's the one that should grab your attention. We have all got friends and family who've been in the hospital for a relatively short period of time, and they've come home with tens of thousands of dollars in bills. The hospital itself was negligible. It was all the doctors that they saw and all the tests that they had done. That can add up to be a big ticket. And an unlimited 20% should put a little fear into your mind, thinking that maybe, just maybe, it might be worth picking up some additional coverage in addition to original Medicare. What you have here is wonderful. It's an unlimited benefit, but it does have exposure. Understand the going rate of what health insurance is going for in the open market. You will hopefully be pleasantly divorced from that reality, but I'll tell you, Lori and I each carry a $7,000 deductible. We each pay $1,000 a month in premiums, each of us, and they have the audacity to call it the Affordable Care Act. If you're in the under 65 individual market and you're not getting a subsidy from the government, and a subsidy is merely the government giving us back our own money to pay for something that they made so expensive in the first place, but I digress. But if you understand the going rate of health insurance is $1,000 a month, you've got to look at this and you've got to say, man, I mean, you know, A and B, I get it. It's not complete. There's some exposure. But man, for $170 a month, how do they do it? They don't. The government's dropping almost $1,000 a month on every person that's in Medicare. They ask you for 170 more if you're being successful, but that money is what they're using to fuel this, this adventure called original Medicare. That's why they want to charge you more if you're making more. That's that Irma thing we talked about. But don't think for a moment that the government is running health care that you get with A and B for $170 a month. It can't be done. You've got a pretty big budget, and that's going to become a critical component when we start talking about these things called advantage programs. Lori, got any questions? It's been quiet on this front, um, but I but I think that one of the things that it, it, only because the commercials are screaming about it, one of the questions I get a lot when you go back to that slide of what's covered under part B, um, one of the light items that's not listed there is, is vision. And I get this question all the time. So Medicare, it's important to understand Medicare part B has your back for disease and injury. And I always use the analogy that like your auto insurance doesn't pay for your oil changes, Medicare isn't going to pay for a new pair of glasses or for you to get your teeth cleaned. However, Medicare is going to cover cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, and the eye exams related to the screening and or diagnosis of those things. 
So, uh, you know, a lot of folks think that they need additional vision coverage because Medicare doesn't cover vision. Medicare does cover the, the big stuff, the important stuff related to vision. They just don't cover a new pair of cheaters because you need a new prescription. Um, and, and I don't know, that's just kind of an aside, but that is a question that we get a lot in terms of what, what is covered under Medicare Part B. What about physicals? Um, well, so the language that people are used to in the under 65 world, on employer coverage, people are used to get are used to getting preventive services for free. Well, really you're paying a premium, so you're not really getting that stuff for free, but Medicare doesn't call it a physical. And so our clients have gotten burned when they're now on Medicare and they call and say, I want to have a physical with Dr. Smith. If Dr. Smith doesn't realize they're on Medicare and he bills an off, a code for a physical, Medicare is going to deny it. Medicare pays for a physical, but what they're paying for basically is the office visit. In addition to the fact that Medicare covers annually a wellness visit, but that wellness visit, if you read on the Medicare website what that wellness visit is, it's really a conversation between you and your doctor. The minute the doctor says, hey, is there anything else you have a question about? And you say, yeah, I need to talk to you about this back pain or yeah, something else. They're going to bill not only the Medicare wellness visit to Medicare, but they will bill now a separate office visit that had clinical decision-making involved. It's covered, office visits are covered, but sometimes people get a little confused because they see two charges um, or... Again, if you ask for a physical and they bill a physical, Medicare doesn't cover for physicals, they cover for the wellness visits and the office visits. It's yeah, just, they're... it's just at the end of the day, you're getting the same thing from your doctor. It's just billed and termed differently once you come to Medicare. Yeah, there's there's new language you need to learn. You don't get an annual physical, but you do get a wellness visit for no charge. But the wellness visit is literally just a conversation. Anything the doctor deems appropriate or necessary, like a mammogram or an MRI on your knee that's hurting, blood work, or a blood panel, all things. that's covered. Yeah, all that's covered, but it's not lumped into this one visit charge that you may be used to having called a physical. And as long as they code it diagnostic, we should be good. A and B good, but not complete. So now how are we going to make it complete? Well, there's two pathways to travel. First pathway called original Medicare has a lot of good things going for it. One of the things that throws people when you come to Medicare, um, you've always been a couple, 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 married couple. Now Medicare wants to break you up, but that's not a bad thing. What you only got from your employer was a one size fits most. And you never realized what was going into that program and the, and the fights that went on in the boardroom because they wanted to determine network and co-payments and co-insurance and deductible and wellness and drugs and all those things that got put into a program and they brought it to you and said, here it is, one size fits most. Now we can specifically design a program for mom and maybe a totally different program for dad. The beauty of Medicare is its ability to be customized and changed through the aging process. Another major change when you come to this world of Medicare, you've got to kind of check what you learned at the door because you've been taught certain things that now are a little bit different, like the wellness visit versus a traditional physical that you got every year. Now it's a little bit different lingo. And here, one of the major changes that people have a tough time wrapping their mind around is when you're in the under 65 market, your brain is focused on network. You could be with Blue Cross or Aetna or Humana or Cigna or United Healthcare, but you know you've got to stay in that network because if you leave that network and go out of network, you're going to get hammered with out of network charges. Network, network, network. Okay, I'm with you. But now we're coming to the world of Medicare. What's my network in the world of original Medicare? It's any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States. They take Medicare, you're in. It is the largest PPO you could possibly have. And Medicare is now primary. Medicare is in the driver's seat. Medicare is running the show. As a result, they've negotiated prices nationwide. And what we have now is the ability with a new sheriff in town, they're allowing companies to sell us products from all over the fruited plain. 
And what we find here is robust competition that's been kept on the rails by the folks at Medicare. A and B good, but not complete. How do we make it complete? Let's look to pick up a Medicare supplement. We call them supplements because they supplement what A and B do. Or if you prefer the term, we call them Medigap plans. We use the same term, two different terms for the same thing, just to confuse you. It's good for business. But here we have Medicare supplements or Medigap plans. These are packages of benefits brought to us by private insurance companies who line up around the block to get a shot at the baby boomers. 10,000 of us a day turning 65. Big, big business. And currently here in Illinois, we've got 40 different companies that offer these Medicare supplements. And it could be a logistical nightmare, but it's not because Medicare tells these guys how they're going to play the game, how they're going to sell these things. You're going to sell these things according to Medicare rules. Private insurance companies playing on the perfect field of capitalism that Medicare has designed, the perfect field of competition. Here in this benefits column, we see everything we just described, A and B, really good, but nowhere near complete. And Medicare allows for 10 different packages, 10 different levels of coverage. How robust do you want your coverage to be? It can be, it can be the penthouse. It can be the up tent. It can be somewhere in between. But you get to choose the level of coverage that's appropriate for your situation. This is where it's very important to make a fully informed decision based on facts, not on fear and scare tactics by insurance companies that want you to spend way more than you should spend. And, and that's a, a part of my industry. It's frustrating, but true. We're compensated by the insurance companies. There's never a charge to you for our services. But if we can scare the bejesus out of you and get you to buy something that's more expensive, it's in the vested interest of the agent. It's not good for you, not the way that we play the game, but understand the game. Medicare says what these letters represent. If you look at N as an example, one of several options, N is a package of benefits. But Medicare says what N is, not the insurance companies. And we have 40 companies that are out there offering N. Now, wait a second, you're telling me that N from Blue Cross Blue Shield would be similar to N from Mutual of Omaha? No, not similar, identical. Medicare says what N is, not the insurance companies. Well, now, wait a second, I, I've got Blue Cross Blue Shield and I know my doctor takes Blue Cross Blue Shield. Does my doctor even take Mutual of Omaha? No, sir, wrong question. Does your doctor take Medicare? Does your doctor accept Medicare assignment? Medicare is primary. Medicare is your insurance. Medicare is the one that's doing the negotiations and the billing. You never even have to do anything other than give them your Medicare card. They bill Medicare, then Medicare says, oh, you're with one of any of the 40 companies that offer these products. So wait a second. If N is N and the network is the network, well, then what's the difference? Because they're all the same price, right? No, there's 40 companies fighting for your business. They're all viciously competitive and want to win your business. As a result, we have 40 companies all in a level field, and you can see what they're doing. We can show you what they're doing. And there are companies that have vastly different prices, which might attract you if you understood the basics but didn't understand the important variables. The most important variable is not who's got the cheapest price. In our world, the most important variable, who's been around the longest? Who has the best financial rating? Who insures the most people? Who has the steadiest track record of rate increases? And if you do that, of the 40 companies that are on this field of play, I'd be willing, willing to bet 32 of them you've probably never heard of before. And that's not a good place to be. What you want are the companies that have stood the test of time. Lori and I typically focus on the big four here because I'm not gonna hit your wagon in Northwest Arkansas life E minus company that's been in the market for over 11 months, and we're pretty sure they're going to be there in 20 years to pay claims. No, thanks. I want to stay with the guys that have proven their metal. That's where you want to be here is with security, not with the lowest price. But people make a mistake here. They, the old adage, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. If N is N, and it's the same network and it's the same coverage, well, I'm just going to go online and I'm going to find the cheapest price on the N because I get to change that every year during the annual election period. Wrong. Sorry, not the way it works. 
With supplements, you get a one-year window. You get what we call your golden ticket. You get a one-year window that surrounds the activation of your Part B. Six months before you activate B, that could be at 65 or 75 or 85. Six months before you activate B and six months after, go anywhere you want to go. You got to take you. That's the law with these Medicare supplements. Law number one, when you first activate B, you've got that one-year window. Go anywhere you want to go. They got to take you. It's the law. Rule number two, once you pick one of these companies and one of these products, they can never drop you. You're theirs and they're yours until the day you die. They can't drop you because of excessive claims. And rule number three, most importantly, it cannot single you out for a rate increase. When you're in a Medicare supplement, it's all in on the same bucket, all sharing in claims. You can never be singled out. If you did N with AARP, you go into a pool that everyone has got N from AARP in the Chicagoland area. These are regional in nature, regional in risk assessment. You have a terrible year. First diagnosis, dread disease, snake bite, stroke out, uh, fall off a roof, hit by a car, any number of maladies. They can't come to you and say, man, you were really expensive. No, they can only share your claims in this instance with everyone that's got N from AARP. Safety in numbers, bigger pools of insured, sharing claims over a big pool of people keep rates down. Smaller companies that have to do battle will lowball the market and they're hoping and praying that they get a healthy group of people. Because if they get a healthy group of people, then business is pretty good and they can keep their rates in check. But inevitably, these smaller groups, there's always the one guy that needs a lung transplant or the lady that needs chemotherapy. They're all sharing in the claims. And these smaller pools, these smaller companies can be very volatile. They can go up very quickly and run out of control. And people who burn that golden ticket, that one-year window, go anywhere they want to go, they find themselves seduced and abandoned farther down the road because now they're with a very small group of people and those rates are going up. Be careful. Make smart choices. Understand the world of Medicare has 10 levels of coverage. If we were to drill into it, we'd see traditionally three are the ones that dominate the conversation. And it's a good cross-section to look at. F and G and N. F, a package of benefits that was the darling for years because it was so simple to understand. Well, that's part of the reason. Simple to understand because F is the package. And as long as you filled out that check every month and mailed it in, F wiped out all exposure. Crazy. But with F, it would pay the $15.56. It would pay the $194 a night. It even pay the hospice. It pays the 20%. And F was so comprehensive, it even paid the 233. Literally, coverage the likes of which you've never seen before, unless maybe you were a member of Congress at one point in time. No deductible, no coinsurance, no copayments. That sounds fabulous, but wait a second, I know how insurance companies work. The more you want them to do, they're happy to do it. But the more they do, the more they charge. And it never took long if you were analyzing it from a factual standpoint and maybe had a calculator in your hands, you'd see what we've seen for years, G, superior value, value, value. G that does almost everything F does with one exception. G asks you to reach into your pocket and pay for something. Pays for it. What is it? It's the Part B deductible. It's that $233. Once you've paid the 233, that completes G, and now it picks up everything 100%. Amazing. The difference is that you agree to a deductible, which drives down your premiums. At this point, 40 companies would sell you F, 40 companies would sell you G, but I can show you in virtually every instance, the F is at least $50 more per month than the G. That means, mathematically, you're paying $600 more per year at least to be an F. And what's the one benefit? What's the one thing you're getting for your $600? No, they're paying the 233 it's foolishness. And for years, we told people F is for foolish. What you want is better value, which is accomplished with the G. And we were, we were kind of validated two years ago when Medicare and Social Security and the insurance companies agreed they're no longer offering F to new enrollees. So as of January 1st of 2020, you can't even get F. But I've seen disingenuous agents telling people who might be coming to Medicare at 68 or 69, 
Mr. and Mrs. Klein, you can still get F. It's the granddaddy of them all. It's the best possible coverage, no deductible, you want F. Be, be quick, that train is leaving the station. Well, it's not the train leaving the station, it's the Titanic setting sail because this F was overpriced to begin with. But remember the concept of the risk pool, sharing claims with everyone who has the same policy that you have from the same company. So what's happening with F, Where'd the 65 year olds go? We, we, we want the young people in here sharing in our costs. No 65 year olds, no 66 year olds, merely a group of people who overbought in the first place with the F as it gets smaller and that group gets sicker and older. The healthy people, the smart people, they're getting out. But the others who are trapped in F may not even realize the mistake they've made. The problem with Medicare that we see, people who don't make fully informed decisions wind up finding out years later that maybe they didn't get the smartest thing. I know agents love to sell F because it's the most expensive thing you can possibly buy. It pays the highest commissions. But we've seen G be a better value for years. And because of the claims being filed and a younger risk pool, G has had slower rate increases than the F. Well, G says pay a deductible. That's one way to drive down premiums. How could we drive down premiums further? You know, dig a little deeper into your pocket and consider at least N as in Nancy, where cost sharing could drive down your premiums. G says pay the deductible and walk on everything else. It is the best sleeping pill that money can buy. It is phenomenal coverage and it's a tremendous value, but it's more expensive than if you partner with an insurance company. Insurance companies love it when you assume a little extra risk. And N says you'll do exactly that. With N, you agree to pay the same Part B deductible. You pay that 233. But after that, everything's going to be covered except for with the N, you're going to have doctor co payments and $50 to go to the emergency room. The doctor co payments, negligible, $20 to see a doctor, $20 to see a specialist, $50 if you go to the emergency room and they send you home. If they keep you overnight, the whole thing's covered. Well, that's going to drive premiums down. Oh, interesting. So more cost sharing, co-payments and participating and partnering with the insurance company can drive down premiums. Yes, that'll become a critical component when we talk about advantage programs. Remember that your cost sharing is driving down premiums. That N, if we were looking at a female turning 65, ballpark, many companies want your business, but that G is going to be right around 100 and a quarter, 120, 130 ballpark among the big players. And because you've agreed to doctor co-payments, probably going to be around 90 bucks a month. Do the math, an assessment of your situation, a rational analysis. The G is 120 and the N is 90. That's $30 difference per month uh, times 12. That's a $360 difference in premiums year one. But that's not fair. You're not comparing an apple to an apple. You're comparing a product that has no co-payments to a product that has co-payments. I agree. But the product that has co-payments is $360 less per year. And those co-payments are 20 bucks. Do the math. This is a very good option as long as she's not going to the doctor more than 18 times a year. That can make a lot of sense. And for many people, it does. I talked with a couple earlier today. Their agent never even mentioned the end. It was all G, baby, all G all the time. Because they're turning 65, and what's the most expensive thing you can buy? Infuriating to me, but it happens. Cost sharing will drive down premiums. That's why the G is less than the F, and the N is even less than the G. You could go crazy. There's a high deductible supplement. It says that you'd accept an out-of-pocket maximum of $2,490. It'd be scary to many people. And many baby boomers have been going to bed every night with a six or a seven or $8,000 deductible. And that's getting to the 8,000 number before you get one penny. It's $2,490. It's a compilation of everything that you spend. That's pretty reasonable in my estimation. Might not be your cup of tea, but certainly... This, this field of play deserves to be analyzed and understood. Medicare has three big rules. One, they got to take you when you come to Part D, but that only lasts for a year. What happens after that six months, right? Six months before you, you activate B, six months after. Eventually, that six months wears away. And then you find 
What are the rules of engagement? Well, now you don't get another guaranteed issue, but you do have the right to change your supplement every month of the year. Wow, that's incredible. But hang on. Now they have the right to underwrite, to ask medical questions, to stop you at the door and say, thank you very much. But did you say hip replacement? We don't need to pay for that. We don't have to pay for that. You stay right where you are because we won't offer you coverage. And that is in Illinois, of the 40 companies on this field of play, that's how 39 of them would treat you if you wanted to move to their company. They're going to ask you medical questions. But in Illinois, it's hard to imagine that the words blessing and Illinois are in the same sentence, but with supplements there are. We have a blessing in Illinois. We have a Medicare supplement company that does not ask medical questions. Us as agents, this is phenomenal. I can rescue the guy who at 85 is now paying $340 a month for his F, never should have been there in the first place. And even though he's got emphysema and he's not doing particularly well, we've got a Medicare supplement company where I can move him to G without medical underwriting. Even though he's got medical conditions, he doesn't go to the doctor all that much. I could move him to N without medical underwriting. That is a blessing. And that allows us to save people who might have made faulty decisions initially. The problem is it sits in the kitchen drawer and they don't figure it out for maybe several years, but eventually they're going to realize that this is way overpriced and it's going to drag them to the table because on a fixed income, as these premium rates go up a little bit each year, eventually they're going to look for rate relief and moving from an F to a G or a G to an N could present that ability to save money. Lori, you got any questions? Yeah, David, I think we need to kind of... Let them digest this whole supplement thing because uh, and, re <laughs> and reiterate because one of the questions was about pre-existing conditions. So I'll say it the same but differently, which is when you first pick a supplement and you're brand new to Medicare, I don't care if you're 65 or 85, it's the act of turning on your Medicare Part B. Once that starts, there's a six month window from the start of that six months out where you can pick any Medicare supplement. And furthermore, in that six month window, you can make as many changes as you want, can't ask you any medical questions. So let's say you started with G and you thought, you know, this is a little bit overkill, I wanna to move to N. Or, or maybe you were 68 and you decided for whatever reason I wanna to move to, you can move a, me a million times, can't ask you medical questions. But once that six months is over, no, that this annual enrollment season that we are just entering every year, that you're seeing advertisements and getting mail about, does not give you a free pass with no medical questions to change your supplement. That is a really common misconception. I get a do-over every year, right? Wrong. You can change your supplement any time of the year. You don't have to wait for the Medicare annual enrollment season, but the caveat to the change is you will have to, once you're six months out from your activation of Part B, answer medical questions with everybody but that one company in Illinois, which someone asked, what is that company? I will say it out loud, it's Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois. And so, you know, if we've got somebody who, I mean, just this week, I talked to a lady who is in her mid eighties. She has plan F, she's paying over $400. We are going to move her to plan G with Blue Cross Blue Shield because she has medical conditions and save her $200 a month. So I, that's why I like having that company with no medical questions because I can save people who are in situations like that where financially they're really struggling or the flip side, maybe somebody who's on Medicare Advantage that may need to come back to regular Medicare for whatever reason and also has sort of some medical conditions that would preclude them from getting a supplement with anybody else. So, so that's the switching thing. I think the other thing that somebody brought up, um, and I'm actually not surprised that this person heard that, what they heard was called a company, the, the agent at that company said that they've got special discounts and pricing that they offer that people like David and I don't offer. That is totally a sales pitch. We've heard it a lot. 
Just know that no matter how you get your Medicare supplement, whether it's through David or I, through the, the company directly, through another agent, we all are offering exactly the same thing. That is the rules of Medicare. So anybody that tells you otherwise is just trying to blow smoke through your ears and sell you a product and move on to the next client. I think the advantage of working with a broker, again, whether it's us or somebody else, brokers are gonna be able to show you all the companies and all the plans and all the pricing. All that the company is going to do if you call the company directly is talk to you about their product. They're not going to have information about any of the other products. So you won't be able to make a price comparison, which to a large degree, that's what you're doing. You will also not be able to find pricing on Medicare.gov. So, so while Medicare designs plans A through N and has information about plans A through N online, um, they're not going to really talk about companies and pricing and let you just run a quote for yourself. Um, you will have to either go to the company or use a broker. So sorry to digress. No, it's just, it, and you bring up a good point. The telesales people, I mean, they are so slick. They, they really irk me. And I hope there's a separate circle of hell for these people because I've heard it all before. Hey, if you sign up today, right now, I can get you a 39% discount. How would that sound, Mr. Client? But you got to do it today because the rates are going up next week. Take a big step back and please, whether it's Lori or me, don't do these things over the phone. Uh, the, the people that we run into that have made mistakes with a broker in Florida that they're never going to ever get to again because that guy's moved on to selling aluminum siding. Sit with somebody who can sit down and make sense of this stuff with you. The a, other thing, good. Yeah, the other thing that came up, I'm sorry, about supplements is moving. We've got a, a couple of questions about moving. Because when you're on the original Medicare side of the world, Medicare is good anywhere in the United States. All the Medigap policy does is it stands behind Medicare. So in most instances, that supplement's going to move with you. You do not have to change your supplement. There are some unique policies that are only good in certain states, but that's a rabbit hole we, need, we don't need to go up. Uh, go down. And and the other question that came up is if somebody wants to upgrade their, you know, go from like a high deductible F to a high deductible G, will that require medical under underwriting? Unfortunately, yes, it does. Any kind of a move up or down will require medical underwriting. Um, there are some new rules in Illinois and, and a handful of other states um, that will allow certain situations and certain changes with no medical underwriting. But again, that's a, a whole nother hour conversation that we don't have time for tonight. Gotcha. So again, A and B good, A and B not complete. Look to pick up a Medicare supplement. We do have flexibility there. Lori mentioned a company that doesn't ask medical questions. We're not, we're not shilling for that company. We represent virtually all of them. But what you want to know is what are the tools in the tool chest that we can utilize? And there's ways to fight the increasing cost of health care. A and B good, but not complete. Pick up a supplement. Dad might like the G, mom might like the N or vice versa. Typically, we're going to keep this with the same company because there are household discounts that you want to know about to save money. But we still need a drug program and make it complete prescription drug program, again, this is part of the world of Medicare is running the show, but private insurance companies are bringing us these products, viciously competitive, complete transparency. We can see what everyone's doing, but they're all playing on the same field that Medicare has designated how these things work, not what they're going to charge, not what they're going to cover, but how they're going to work. You don't have to take a drug program when you first come to Medicare, but if you don't, there's a penalty. They will wait for you. And that penalty will continue to accrue through the years until you come to the conclusion that, oh my goodness, it's not a generic drug. Oh my goodness, I can't get it cheaper on GoodRx. Oh my goodness, this is a $500 drug. I better go get a drug program. And you can. Every year we can save you from your first mistake of not getting a drug program and accruing a penalty and, and maybe saving you a bunch of money on your meds. That's what this annual election period is for. We can put you into a drug program for the first time at 90, but there's going to be a penalty for all those years you didn't take a drug program. And that's a penalty you pay every month for the rest of your life. It's not a one-time penalty. 
annual election period from October 15th to December 7th, you might find that you started taking a new drug or stopped taking a drug, or just that capitalism has driven down the price of these drug programs dramatically over the last 15 years. Eight years ago, we didn't have a drug program that was under $20 a month. Five years ago, we didn't have a drug program that was under 15. Last year, we had a drug program that came to market under $10 a month. This is amazing. This year, we have a drug program under $5 a month. Now, is that the most robust coverage? Of course not. The most expensive drug program is over $100 a month. But this guy's a wreck. He might be willing to pay a higher premium to get lower co-payments for a broader selection of drugs. Because every one of the drug programs is going to cover different stuff. The $5 drug program is really good for generics. The $104 drug program is very good for brand name drugs. But somewhere in the middle there, between 24 options, you find that each of the companies cover different stuff. And they could, they could tier it differently, meaning one company may have your drug as a tier three, and it has an associated copayment. Another drug may carry it as, another company may carry it as a tier four. Uh, another company may not cover it as all at all, but, but all the drug programs are very competitive in what they offer. But with 24 drug programs, they've got to decide, do we want to go after generics or do we want to go after brands or do we want to go after mail order? Or maybe we only work with Walgreens, but on that field of play, we've got 24 to choose from and it is mind blowing. Probably the toughest part of Medicare, as you look at it, is the government has designed this Medicare Part D drug program. All of the companies, whether you're in an Advantage program or a standalone, they're all going to be built this way. They all have stages of coverage. And this is a tough one to wrap your mind around. But let's talk to the person who just got prescribed Eliquis. Eliquis is a brilliant blood thinner. It's a wonderful, convenient, miracle drug, but it's about $500 a month. Well, on the typical drug program, most of them have a deductible. The deductible on most drug programs does not apply to the purchase of tier one or tier two drugs. Those are your cheap generics. But that Eliquis is a tier three drug. It's advertised on TV. And as a tier three drug, you're going to pay the annual deductible this year. That was $480. Your first $500 Eliquis is going to knock out the deductible. And then you'd move into a stage called the initial stage of coverage. And life is pretty darn good. You're paying a monthly premium for your drug program. But now you're getting your Eliquis for $40 a month. It's phenomenal. You're paying $40 for a $500 drug. I know that's why you got a drug program. Not smart. But understand, when you're paying $40, they're tracking the retail value of your drug. And that $500 drug, you're paying $40, they're tracking $500. If the retail value of your drugs this year was to exceed $4,430 worth of drugs, that's going to move you from the initial stage of coverage into the coverage gap, also known as the donut hole. Not to panic, you're still covered, but now you've got a much larger responsibility. Yes, now you're going to pay 25% of the retail value of the drug. That means your $40 copay over here is going to go to what's 25% of five, $125 a month. That gets spendy and sometimes takes people by surprise. We want to see the coverage gap coming eight lanes wide. You can get out of the coverage gap, but most people don't. It's, it's a long haul to get out of the coverage gap. But what's going on here is the government is trying to direct your behavior, understand the carrot and the stick. All you're taking is generic drugs. It's pretty tough to get to $4,000 worth of generic drugs. I mean, you'd need a whole big bowlful every morning, be chowing down on those to get anywhere near $4,000 worth. Most generic drugs are worth pennies on the dollar. But boy, if you start taking those expensive drugs, uh, Eloquist, Zorelto, Ozempic, right? Catchy commercial. But that Ozempic retails for almost $900 a month. It's not going to take you but four or five months to fall into the coverage gap, and now you're paying 25% of a $900 drug. We need to see this coming eight lanes wide. If you don't, shame on you, because the tools that we have to be able to do that, go to medicare.gov, call 1-800-MEDICARE, 
Find yourself a ship counselor. These are volunteers that will help you navigate this world. We do this with our clients every year. Are you in the best place getting maximum value for the next year? I don't know, but I do know that I can enter your meds in at medicare.gov and I can run you a report that shows you the best program for the next year. This is one we ran at the beginning of this year. $25 program. That's pretty reasonable. Um, it's got the $480 deductible. What's he taking? We entered these meds. Uh-oh, there's the eloquence. Darn it. Well, this is saying it's worth roughly $500 a month. So at $500 a month, ooh, he's going to pay his deductible in January. The first fill is going to knock out the deductible. But then look at that. He's going to be paying $30 a month, $30 a month for a $500 drug. Life is good, praise the Lord. But when he's paying $30, they're saying 500. He's paying 30. They're saying 500. And they're saying 500 until he gets to the coverage gap. He will have received more than $4,500 worth of drugs, worth of drugs retail in August. And what happens then? Welcome to the coverage gap. And now he goes from 30 to basically a buck 25 per month. That is really scary stuff, and we want to be able to analyze that. Are there drugs that you could pull off of your Part D drug program? Maybe. Maybe you might find that Ventolin now has gone generic. And that Ventolin, you can actually get that. If you guys aren't hip to goodrx.com, you should be. It's a wonderful tool that we have in our tool chest. And right now, you'd find at GoodRx, you can get the generic for Ventolin. I believe last check, it was $12. Well, that's going to be better than after the deductible, and it's even going to be better than in the coverage gap. And sometimes generic drugs can be uh, better served not running it through the Part D drug program. The government is notoriously slow at the uptake of generic drugs. But RX is a good tool that we have. Understand the power of a preferred pharmacy. I've seen people get the right drug program and go to the wrong retailer. That's a critical mistake. You want a preferred pharmacy where you're getting the biggest bang for your buck. Many people will make the mistake of, of, of using the right drug program in the wrong pharmacy and pay way too much. Used to be mail order was always your best option. Not so much anymore. The retailers have figured out this is a wonderful way to get people into the store. And they'll price their meds at even less than what you pay at mail order. You can still get 90-day supply. But what you'd find is that the retailers have figured out when they tell you it's going to be about 10, 15 minutes, you don't just stand there tapping your foot. You wander. One of my favorites now in the preferred world, Mariano's, is coming out as a preferred pharmacy very frequently because each of these drug programs have different strategic alliances at retail. Mariano's knows if they set you loose in that store for 15 minutes, you're, you're going to find something to buy because there's tasty stuff at Mariano's. They'll sell their meds at virtually no markup to get you in there because you'll buy other stuff. Use the preferred pharmacy. Use Medicare.gov. Figure out the best drug program for you for the next year. People are here to help you out with that. And it's critically important to make sure we're getting maximum value. A and B good, but not complete. We're going to add a supplement. Maybe it's different for mom and dad. And we're going to add a drug program. And we're going to put those three things together. We're going to customize a program for each of you. Dynamic changeable through the aging process. We've got some flexibility with supplements. We've got total flexibility with the drug programs once a year. And we've got the largest network we could possibly have. Any doctor, any hospital that takes Medicare, they're in. And this is the way that most people are going to start their journey. Frankly, in the world of Medicare, um, your mom and dad had this, your friends have this, and it's a good feeling of comfort. You know for sure your doctor is there. And, and here we have a, a drug program and a supplement. And this is where many people will stop they're investigative. They'll make a decision, throw it in the kitchen drawer, and not revisit it. But they will. They'll be forced to. And sometimes sooner rather than later. But we see a lot of people, 75, 76, right in that zone. Dad seems to be sitting at the kitchen table. And you know, baby, when we signed up, your supplement and your drug program was, was pretty reasonable. But now, between your supplement and your drug program, we're dropping 250 a month. And between my supplement and my drug program, we're dropping another $250 a month. That's $500 a month. That's $6,000 a year. And as far as I can tell from the explanation of benefits, we went to the doctor a total of seven times last year. That's, it's time for a reflection. 
And maybe we're lucky enough to get a shot at it. We have a lot of people come and sit down and we'll do an analysis of what you've got. And I'm sorry to explain to you, but you probably shouldn't have taken the F. You, you, you've, got, you've got overkill. Um, you're only going to the doctor seven times a year. F is total overkill. G would have made more sense, or maybe N. N could make a lot of sense. You don't go to the doctor all that much, and we can drive those premiums down. And you're telling me that in the last 12 years, you haven't even looked at your drug program? I'm, I'm sorry, that's low-hanging fruit. And I understand what you did when you did what you did, because you took the $31 drug program because two of the medications you were taking were tier three drugs, and you needed a more expensive drug program for the more expensive drugs. Here we are 12 years later, those drugs have gone generic while your $31 premium's gone to $76. That's low hanging fruit. You don't need a $76 drug program. You need like an $8 drug program where those generic drugs now are a $2 copay. That's a good feeling. And you're able to put it together and glue it back together again, make sense of it and save them money. The problem there is it's always mom. Mom seems to always want to know, how long could we have been saving $230 a month? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, it's probably been about eight to 10 years. They get a long look in their eye, long away look. Now, that's one possibility that they would stay right where they are. And unfortunately, we know statistically 70% is what we're told. 70% of the people who are already in Medicare won't even look at their plans this year. They're so tired of the advertising and the mail and the phone calls. They put their fingers in their ears and they refuse to participate. That's a mistake. But we also know that that couple, if they don't make any move at all, they're going to drop six grand next year. And if history holds and they have another seven doctor visits, they're getting clipped. Maybe we tune this up. Or maybe, just maybe, they do watch a TV commercial or 1,000 or 10,000. And they might be tempted by this thing called Medicare Advantage. Different idea, different ground rules, different engagement. Let's understand the basics. We said that Medicare was not running Medicare for the $170 a month that you're paying. They're dropping near $1,000 a month. Medicare will partner with private insurance companies and they will turn you over to a private insurance company. And now you agree to have everything run through that insurance company. Here, we had three pieces to your coverage, customized. Now, for an analogy, this is more of a one-size-fits-all. It's a private insurance company. That means, first and foremost, we don't have access to any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States. Now we have a more restrictive network, and that can be okay as long as your doctors are in network. Over here, we had the ability to have a supplement the $233 deductible after which you walked on everything, MRI, CAT scan, x-ray, stress test, iron lung, kidney transplant, all covered. But now, now you go with a private insurance company with network restrictions. That's not a bad thing, but let's understand it. And now we've moved to an a la carte menu. On advantage programs, there's going to be co-payments for services. That's not a bad thing. The commercials on TV make me want to throw my, my shoe through the screen. They advertise everything as being zero, 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 zero. And I know how the human mind works. They say zero, you hear free. It's not free. First of all, let's understand, you never stop paying for the part B. We've got to have A and B to do anything else. And here on the Advantage programs, yes, it's possible that the primary care physician visit would be a zero copay and, and your flu shot would be a zero copay. And there's some benefits in there that truly are a zero copay. But your blood panel is 10, your x-ray is 15, um, your MRI is 200, your physical therapy visits are 40 a shot, a night in the hospital, three, $400. All of those copayments, though, will have a firewall. Remember, we said original Medicare, good, unlimited benefit, but unlimited exposure. On the Advantage program, we do have a firewall, a worst case scenario. And that's a very important variable that doesn't come up on the TV screens. Here, you could have an out-of-pocket maximum of $233, but you're paying a premium. Here, you might not have a premium, but you'd have a higher out-of-pocket, maybe three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000, depending on the program. That's not a bad thing, but the bit about advantage, the devil's in the details. We want to sit down with you and go through page six and page seven and understand the rules of engagement. 
all of the Medicare Advantage programs. We also call them Medicare Part C for complete. Still got to have A and B. That doesn't go away. These are private insurance products that literally, quite literally, replace original Medicare. You've still got your A and B, but you're going to put that card away because now the federal government is paying a private insurance company a lot of that money. They're not just sending them your 170. They're sending them a large chunk of what they expected to pay if you had stayed on the side of the equation. We said that the supplements can be driven down by your cost participation, co-payments, deductibles, things of that nature. Same thing here, more co-payments driving down premiums because you've agreed to a higher out-of-pocket with network restrictions. All of them are available county by county. That means that the program that's available for your brother in, in Missouri might not be the same program that's available here. Programs that are available in Cook and DuPage might not be available in Grundy or McHenry. But when you're looking at these programs, the beauty of it is that Medicare forces them all into a level field of play, and we can show you everything that's available. And it is true, Joe Namath is true, they may include additional benefits, they typically do. These are sweeteners, things to get you interested, get you to dial the 800 number, but some of them can be pretty thin. Some of them, the dental, I saw one, $5,000 in dental. Well, there's a grabber, but what's involved in the dental? It's going to cover your cleanings. $5,000 worth of cleanings? That's not really a benefit. Well, but it got you to call, didn't it? Vision, typically a, maybe a couple hundred bucks off of lenses and frames, depending on the company. A hearing benefit, but typically you've got to stay with their guys. Yes, there's a gym club membership, but let's analyze what the value of these things really are to the way you access the healthcare system. They all got to play by Medicare rules. Medicare runs the show. They will, by definition, be more restrictive than what you've got with original Medicare. It will be a subset of doctors that take original Medicare. All of the programs will have co-payments for services, but one company's co-payments are different than the others, but Medicare forces them all to lay their benefits out in exactly the same fashion. All of them will have cap exposure. What does that mean? That's your firewall. That's your worst case scenario. If it all goes wrong, Doctors and facilities, buildings and services will have a maximum firewall, worst case scenario. Depending on how restrictive that program is, if it's an HMO and you're very restricted in where you can go, it's going to have a lower out of pocket than a PPO where they give you more selection. And yes, there's zero premium HMOs and zero premium PPOs. Well, you said anytime the insurance company does more, they charge more. How'd they do that? Well, the PPO is going to have higher co-payments and more exposure if something goes wrong. That's not a bad thing. But we find people who literally will call the 800 number, as uh, uh, William Chatner told them to, and they sign up for these things without fully comprehending the details. That's what we're imploring you to do. Advantage is not a bad thing, but let's go through it and understand fully what you're getting yourself into. Most of them will include a Part D drug program built right into the chassis. And sometimes there's sweeteners hiding in these drug programs on the Advantage plans, things that are less expensive because you've gone to a managed care platform. We had one of these Advantage programs several years ago. Top the world went to a zero copay on insulin. Well, that we moved a lot of people in that program who were on insulin because insulin at that point in time was extremely expensive. To get to a platform where they had a zero premium for insulin was a grabber, and, and it, was, it was a good thing. Now, now we see that these Part D drug programs, it's worth investigating in there because sometimes you might find something that treats your med more favorably. And these are all available to us during the annual election period. These Advantage programs are growing in popularity. The way they work is there are no medical underwriting questions. There's no pre-qualifications. There's no pre-existing conditions, riders or waivers. They will welcome you with open arms. And Medicare kind of likes these things because they're turning you over to a private insurance company. They're not taking your phone calls anymore. Now you're calling the private insurance company. They're spending less than they had anticipated spending and they've turned over all administration to somebody else. That's magic for the government. They're doing less than they were gonna do and paying less than they thought they were gonna pay. Advantage grows like a weed because of the lower premiums. 
You ever ask yourself why there's so many commercials on TV about these things? Because it's big, big business. You have to watch yourself. I will tell you in my industry, Advantage pays the highest commissions of anything in the Medicare industry. And as a result, there's a lot of agents that will only talk to you about Advantage. They won't even bring up the world of Medicare. They won't even, they won't even answer your questions about the difference between G and N. We need to understand all of this stuff before we can understand the value of an Advantage program. It's there. This couple we talked about, they were going to spend $6,000 for seven doctor visits. Well, if they took that money and put it in the cookie jar, and instead of spending it on premiums, they used it for co-payments over here. If next year is anything like this year, seven doctor visits, a couple of nights in the hospital, a trip in an ambulance, they still haven't spent $1,000. These can make sense. We always used to say, with Medicare, any doctor, any hospital, anywhere in the United States, they take Medicare you're in. And that recently changed about three years ago. We've got one of the local medical groups whose name shall not be spoken, that moved 34 of their primary care physicians onto a Medicare Advantage only chassis. Well, to get to those primary care physicians, you need to be a member of an Advantage program. But all of the specialists in that medical group still take Medicare. And 84 of their other primary care physicians would take Medicare as well, but they've gone on to this idea of Medicare Advantage, and they push it pretty hard. But please understand, their goal may be more financial than you suspect, and, and we'd love to talk to you about them as well, but that takes sitting down and going through this stuff with a fine-tooth comb. What we find about the world of Medicare is Medicare likes these. They'll give you a one-year trial right. That's interesting. They protect you in case you've discovered that maybe there's something here that you don't like. Anytime in the first year you try a Medicare Advantage program, for any reason you decide you don't like it, we can bring you back to original Medicare, no questions asked, as of the first of the next month. But be warned, after that first year, you've saved a fortune. That cookie jar is still plump with a lot of that $6,000, and you decide to let this roll for another year. Outside of that first year, after that, you want to come back to original Medicare. I know the sales pitch. You can come back to original Medicare, get that card out of the drawer. You're back to any doctor, any hospital that takes Medicare, any one of the drug programs, because they're all in play from October 15th to December 7th. And we can go ahead and apply for a supplement. Wait a second. What was that again? Well, we can apply for a supplement. Applying for a supplement is not the same thing as getting a supplement. So after the first year, you can find the possibility of getting back to this side of the equation. You can get hung up here on the supplement, which gives us the flexibility and the comfort to be able to market these Advantage programs is to know that in Illinois, we have a blessing. I said that before. We have a Medicare supplement company. We represent many. We're not hawking that one company. We're just saying that's a sweet spot in the market that not many people know about. As a result, it gives us the confidence to be able to offer these packages of benefits with the knowledge that we have some flexibility to get you back if you decided you want to go back. Doubles in the details. As it is with all of Medicare, what we found here tonight, original Medicare, really good, but not complete. Look to pick up a drug plan and a supplement, and that's one pathway called original Medicare. Or perhaps you decided that Advantage would be worth a try. We'd love to show it all to you. We've got an office in Lyle. There's no charge to you for our services. The prices are the same whether you go through us or somebody else. The question is, can you find a navigator? Can you find a wingman? Can you find somebody that will lay this out to you? And all of it. I apologize. This is a long time we've spent here tonight. And I promise you, we've only skimmed the tops of the trees. We could, we could spend hours on this, and I apologize, I had a cup of coffee. I get geeked up on this because I'm passionate about it. People get upset, and they want to know, how is it possible that somebody is expected to do this on their own? And I say it's easy. They do it wrong. The problem is they don't realize they've done it wrong, and they find out about it years later. And that's no fun. It's not of much solace when I get to the, say to the guy, well, uh, you know, you're 85 and we can save you 230 bucks a month. At least I didn't meet you when you were 86. That's pretty thin. We'll be at the Naperville, excuse me, the Woodridge Public Library this Thursday night. 
will be at the Arlington Heights Public Library next Tuesday night. And if you thought this was geeked up, come in person because you guys were quiet tonight, but usually there's dozens of questions, keeps it pretty lively. We'd love to see you there. Every time you go through this, you're gonna learn a little bit more. Lori, you got any closing comments? I will tell you that there were actually lots of questions. You didn't hear them, but I was getting them on, on the chat. Um, so <laughs> a, couple of, a couple of good ones worth kind of repeating. Um, you know, as far as travel, you know, if somebody starts with something in one state and moves, we talked about original Medicare and how Medicare is good anywhere in the United States. If you have a Medigap policy and you're on the original Medicare side, it doesn't matter where you move, the Medicare supplement goes with you. What you would have to change if you're on original Medicare and you move is your Part D prescription drug plan because those are run state by state. Additionally, if you're on the Medicare Advantage side of the world, even if you stayed in the same state, but you moved to a different county, yeah, you could, could have to change, you could have to change your Medicare Advantage plan. Medicare Advantage plans inherently, because they're network restricted, the plans contract with local physician groups and hospitals. And so for that reason, there are different plans available in actually different counties. So you might be talking to a friend of yours who lives in Cook County. You may have something here in DuPage County. And even though they're maybe from the same company, they may be completely different plans with different benefits. So that's how this world gets very, very confusing. Um, the other kind of travel related question was as it relates to foreign travel. So Medicare's never covered any kind of foreign travel. If you're on original Medicare, most of the Medigap policies, your Medicare supplements, do have a foreign travel benefit um, where they're going to pay a certain dollar amount after a certain deductible. And But what you're going to have to do is when you're in that foreign country, you're going to have to pay up front and then bring whatever bills you have back to the states. And as long as whatever happened and, and what you were treated for would have been covered had it happened in the U.S., your supplement will reimburse you up to a certain dollar amount for those things. Um, what about Medicare Advantage, David, and foreign travel? Typically, the Advantage programs will cover you for foreign travel emergency. Again, to Lori's point, you got to pay up there, bring the bill back here, and they will split that bill with you. Typically, after your co-payment, they're going to cover that. Um, but, you know, the other part about Advantage programs, people worry if you're in an HMO and you go out of state, are you covered? Yeah, you'd be covered for the emergency. But in an HMO, as soon as you have stabilized, they're going to roll you into the parking lot and you're not going to be able to find a participating skilled nursing facility because HMOs, by definition, are very restricted and they're geographically located in the Chicagoland area. That's why on Advantage, we prefer to look at a PPO with a broader selection would give you more opportunity to find places across the United States and be fully covered. Very important. And um, another question that actually just came in about this county thing, sorry, um, is that when you're on an Advantage plan, the plan that you enroll in is in the county that you live in, but, but you can get medical care wherever you want, as long as you're in the network. So, you know, I've got, I've got a client that I think lives in either Grundy or County or Kendall, but all of his doctors are in DuPage County. And so his plan is a, you know, Kendall County plan, but he still is, is accessing services in DuPage County because his DuPage County doctors are in the network of the plan that he chose. So in the PPO. Yeah. So if nothing else tonight, hopefully we've confused you to death and you understand there's a lot going on here. And to just do it on your own, you don't have to do it on your own. We can assist you. We'd love to. Uh, appreciate you being here tonight. Chat us up. Go to our website. We've got more information there. Um, give us a call. You understand, please. This is the most wonderful time of the year. It's Medicare Open Enrollment. The phone is ringing off the hook, and we're trying to get to everybody we can. We're going seven days a week, but we'd love an opportunity to work with you and appreciate you being here tonight.